You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You on this Friday Fly Day. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. And as you can see, doing a little bit different here today, standing. That's which, if you're watching on YouTube. I know a majority true. of our audience is elsewhere. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> We've been kind of messing with YouTube, and so it was on the top of my mind, I guess. But anyways, this is episode 637. We are so glad that you guys are hanging out with us. Appreciate it very much. And uh, this, uh, these airspace questions, are they're tough. Oh, yeah. Normally, we have to take a minute, look it up, go to multiple websites, call find Ted. out what's going on, call Ted. <laughs> Don't get an answer from Ted. That's right. Make decision. Move forward. Right. So yeah. Well, if, if you guys are not familiar with Ted Wilson, uh, Ted Wilson is a certified flight instructor from the FAA, and he was the guy. If you ever grew up in the same kind of age group as me, so if you're in the say 25 to 40 or 25 to 35 range, if you ever went on a United Airlines flight, you might have actually saw Ted's face, because Ted was one of those guys who would essentially instruct people how to do their jobs. And oftentimes, he did the emergency procedure videos as well. So he's got a lot of experience, and normally I defer to Ted when it comes to airspace because simply there's really no good way to visualize airspace right now. And mm -hmm. even as we were you know, talking about uh, airspace and looking this up and researching this question, which we'll play here for you in a second, it was really fascinating to see on the East Coast just how much business is interrupted by mm. presidential TFRs. Yeah, or and just airspace restrictions in general, too. But specifically, I know you were noticing that and thinking, I am so glad I don't live there. I, yeah, I was saying, I'm so glad I don't live on the East Coast, because whether you're in Fort Lauderdale or New York or somewhere in between, you're being affected by this TFR. And, you know, for someone who touts they're so pro-business, it's like, well, then let's create an easy and systematic means for certified pilots to have permission to fly because we shouldn't have to drop everything and run when the president's coming around and we're still 15 miles from that person in a TFR. So, um, and yep. I'm just giving out vague numbers, but... Anyways. Yeah. I, I would like to see a process started because as of right now, I think I was instructed on... Uh, you have to call your local FISDO to get permission to fly in the TFR. So, And it's probably not very easy to get, I would imagine. Unless you have a really good relationship with FISDO. There is that. <laughs> and that, that is always the goal. Power in case of you didn't relationships. Know. Absolutely, absolutely. Anyway. Well, why don't you go ahead and play that question, Rob. Get us started with this guy. Today's question is going to be brought to you by... Do -do -do -do. Our friends at GPC, they did actually not pay for that bit, but GPC is awesome. If you're not using a GPC case for your drones, you really should because there's nothing that's as durable and reliable. And honestly, what makes GPC cases is the foam. It's the, it's the thought process that they put behind each foam insert that goes into a case. So for example, that Mavic backpack Oof, love that thing. Yeah. And you can use it as a tripod. Like, oh, I love it. Anyway, all right. No, they do good stuff. They definitely do. And we've never heard a bad thing about them. Not a right? single time. Because we've They're led, our friends. led a lot of people to GPC, and we've never had anybody say, I wish you wouldn't have done that. So. Actually, speaking of which, if you want a discount to a GPC case, just use coupon code DRONEU15, all caps, DRONEU, no space, 15. Check it out. Anyway, play that question, Rob. Hello, Paul and Rob. Mark here in Pittsburgh. We'd love to see you visit our city someday and host one of uh, your great workshops or fly-ins. I think you'd love our landscapes, the geography, and, and the skyline. I have my 107. I'm in the middle of planning some flights with our uh, new Inspire 2 um, in Westchester County, north of New York City. The Westchester County Airport is designated KHPN, classified as D airspace. It also has a second classification uh, of E2. In my uh, 107 studies, I never encountered such variations of the E-space classification, uh, E2, E5 as examples. 
Can you offer some guidance on how these two classifications work together and the multi-classification within ease airspace? Uh, do all classes have multiple variations? And uh, I appreciate your time, love your podcast, and all the great things you're doing regarding education for uh, drone pilots and uh, the industries and clients we serve. Best wishes from um, Pittsburgh. Thank you, Mark. I, I've never been to Pittsburgh. You have. You've got your tags there from filming a marathon, actually. That is true. I have been to Pittsburgh, and actually, mm. it's a very cool-looking city. Uh, a lot of the Batman movies have been filmed there, so Gotham is actually oh, Pittsburgh. Very cool. I did not know that, but I would love to go to Pittsburgh. I would love to, I don't know, just check it out. I've heard really great things. I've heard they have a really cool downtown. Of course, I'd love to go to a Steeler game. That'd be a lot of fun, um, and it'd be fun to go fly there. It would be a lot of fun to fly there. But um, again, if you're on the East Coast, you're dealing with a lot more stuff than we are on the West Coast. That's why they say the West Coast is the best coast. <laughs> is that what the East Coasters say? That's what the West Coasters yeah, say, that's what and I, I agree with them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I think they both have their strengths. And that's coming from a true coastie. Uh, well, and you're actually an East Coaster. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Born and raised. That's true. Yeah. Sad day. Apparently... <laughs> Apparently you've, I've seen uh, what Washington is really all about. Transitions. <laughs> yeah, well, don't don't uh, hold the East Coast responsible for Washington, D.C. Oh, I'll try not to. All right. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about this really quick. Some airports that are designated as D airspace, which for those of you who haven't taken our airspace class uh, that is taught by TED, we call it brrr, the doghouse. Because that's literally what it looks like on the map. Hmm. So these are simple, nuanced tricks to learn airspace, and which is why we had Ted teach the airspace talk. Uh, now, if you have specific airports that are in congested areas or potentially on approach paths to bigger airports, you can have multiple designations for e-airspace, which I... Didn't even know that there were more than three, and there's five or six. Hmm. Yeah, so so they must be pretty rare. Like, and it doesn't seem you've run into them. No, I no, and in fact, his question is more related to when the airport isn't open, because essentially the airport's going to be open from say seven a.m. to nine p.m. Okay. Um, it's run by someone, and then when the airport closes and there's no control tower, it's e to the surface. So he still would have to get an airspace authorization to fly in that area. Um, but again, if he were to fly in that area, it would actually probably be two authorizations because mm -hmm. if he wants to fly at sunset or sunrise and the airport is closed and it's E to the surface, he would have to get an airspace authorization and then a 107, I think it's 107.41 authorization for nighttime flight. Oh, so those right. two together mm -hmm. in order to fly in the morning, if it was before civil twilight or after civil twilight in the evening. And guys, remember civil twilight uh, technically speaking, is uh, defined as 30 minutes before uh, before sunrise and 30 minutes after sunset. But understand that civil twilight can actually be a whole lot longer and a whole lot shorter depending on where you are in the world. If we're standing on the back side of the mountain, civil twilight's going to last about 15 minutes. That's right. But if we're up in Calgary, Canada, that could be two hours. In fact, I have experienced a two-hour long sunset. And Rob, let me tell you something. I bet it's beautiful. It's so it's heavenly. It's yeah, majestic. I bet. The yeah. aura is amazing. The aura, yep. The aura. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been up there as well, and it is beautiful. Love what it. I loved, and I didn't get to see them this year, but the northern lights. I have never seen them. Oh, oh, it's so amazing. Okay, what I uh. love about Canada is one, uh, so we're staying in the RV and on vacation here, and get out of the RV like 3 a.m. to take a, take a piss. I had to pee really bad, and I don't pee. I don't do the whole pee in the RV thing. I know the girls do. I don't. Anyway, kids, um, when you're at school, don't tell your teacher I need to go take a. Say, may I use the restroom? Excuse me, miss. May I use the John? <laughs> Better. Okay. Um. Anyway, I looked up, and you could just see intricate detail of the Milky Way, like mm. just so much detail. It pitch black outside, and it was like the sky had turned into a painting. Mm. It was amazing. Sounds wonderful and peaceful. Oh, this quiet, is what living the drone life is down. all about, everyone. This is what it's about. It's about experiences and memories that you will never forget. Because guess what? You can sit in that cubicle and listen to this show, or you can get your ass in the car and go fly somewhere later today. That's true. I, I suppose everybody has that choice, right? Every, hey, life is a choice. Just be careful of your airspace. 
Yeah, E to the surface. You need that authorization. That's right. So the E2 to the E5 to the blah, blah. Don't even get me started. Do they, do all classifications have those variations? No. Okay. No, 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 so no. That's just an E airspace it, issue? There are some uh, special extensions where E and C go together, hmm. um, Charlie Airspace, um, but... I'll be honest, Rob, I still learn about airspace. I mean, there is no, if anyone says I'm a master at airspace, they better be old and crotchety and geriatric or they're <laughs> completely full of BS. Well, that's a really interesting point because I've talked to Ted about that and he has specifically mentioned to me, he said people are trying to learn airspace because they have to for the 107, right? He said, but really pilots are taking, I mean, I've been doing this 20, 30 years and I'm still learning stuff every day. For one thing, it's changing. Oh, yeah. All the time. Well, we just saw that E2 designation was like just completed in some airports as recently as 2005. Right. So. Yeah. So there are always things being added, probably removed. So, yeah, it's an, it's a, an ongoing love affair. It, it truly is. But, guys, it goes to showcase why it's so important to continually learn. And it also goes to show why it's important to not only pass the test, but also understand the rules. We just learned about an enforcement action going on today. Right up the road. Right up the road. Mm. And they knew about it before it happened, which is Juicy. rare. But they had sent a team up there to be like, no, no, no. <laughs> Oops. And they're like all saying they're 107 certified, but then had the FAA logo on their website. You can't do that, guys. It's uh, we, we did a whole podcast on that. We thought you could and then yeah, got corrected. Yeah, all the research and asked and, the FAA, Yeah, right? and John Rupert, I think, even chimed in on that a little bit too. I think it's actually pretty clear on the FAA's website. Yeah, you cannot use the logo or the right. seal, period. Yeah, but so. pe a lot of people do. Yeah. It's not hard to find well, if you go no. looking for websites with drone businesses. I'm pretty sure the only time you can use it is if you are a designated FAA safety team member oh, okay. or an FAA representative. Yeah, that's And even right. then, you wouldn't put it on your website if you're like, oh, well, I work for FISDO during the day and on the weekends, I fly my part 107. <laughs> I don't think you I can do know. that. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know is. what those rules are, but it'd be interesting to find out. Anyways. Anyways, if you're interested also on how to fill out an airspace authorization, good news. We just put out the video on YouTube with the update on how to file airspace authorizations. It took a little while, and if you want to know why, we had to part ways with one of our friends here at at DroneU and just some things have been kind of a little bit on the back burner. So I'm having to pick up the pace, which is why you hear the immense amount of caffeine in my voice. <laughs> <laughs> and that is actually probably going to do it for us today as we move on to the other podcasts and epic courses that we're working on. And guys, there's one course we're working on right now, and I'm just so proud of it, Rob, because no one's figured out how to do this. Like mm -hmm. you can't actually have this course on your site because no one's done this thing yet. It's um, exciting. It really is. And, and the things that what I've been so amazed about as you bring this up is the breadth of opportunity that come through this knowledge. True. If that makes sense. There are so many different ways to apply what you're talking you about. You know what's even better, Rob? What? Are we teaching this class from experience? Yeah. Real world. Doing the job in real changing, world. Yes. Money changing hands. Client needs to be happy. Like, this is a real job, Experience. and we're teaching a class on the job. because I'm, I'm really stoked, and because that's I, what we do. Yeah, well, but also I'm seeing more and more mapping jobs kind of mm -hmm. come up. Yeah. But one of the biggest issues is if the client doesn't know how to use the data, you're screwed. Which is a huge part of the course, right? Because oh, if you yeah. just send them a file and it's pretty to look at, that's great, but they're paying for that because of the functionality of yeah, the file. Yeah, no, I think it's actually one of the, it could be, you know, one of the selling points of SightScan, but I'm not, we're not gonna pay $12,000 to try SightScan. Um, I'm about to burst into laughter at the, the idea wow. of paying. I, on that bombshell, <laughs> that's gonna do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. And this is Ask Drone You.